There is an old tale of a river, Shanai Timpishka, set in the depths of the Amazon, it's said that its waters boil with the heat of the sun. Many have set out in search of the river and its mystical healing properties, some never to be seen again, others falling prey to the many jungle spirits. However, spanning the depths of the river is the Yakumama, a powerful Amazonian spirit known as the Mother of Waters. Taking the shape of a giant serpent, the Yakumama births hot and cold waters. This is the reason the river boils. Ancient and wise, this spirit occasionally reveals itself to those who are spiritually prepared at the sacred site where the river's boiling and cold waters collide. It is said that those in search of the river without pure intentions lose their minds in these forests. Only the shamans, or chaman, dare test the depths of the forest in search of the river. People still fear to travel to this region of the jungle without the protection of a chaman to ward off the spirits. In hopes of seeing if the legendary river even exists, we travel to the town of Pucallpa, nestled on the banks of the Ucayale River, the closest developed town to the legends of the Boiling River. Founded in the 1840s, Pucallpa originally served as a trading outpost because of its proximity to the river, the closest developed town to the legends of the Boiling River. However, because of the Amazon rainforest and the massive, impassable Andes Mountains, it has remained isolated from the rest of Peru. Because of the remote nature of the town, the dense forests of the Amazon, and the lack of developed roads, the river serves as a primary mode of travel through water taxis, which are typically long, narrow boats. From Pucallpa, we got to experience the first hand of the severity of the roads as we made our way by truck to the small village of Onaria. Only 70 kilometers of the road ended up taking us over three hours to traverse. Once arriving in Onaria, we tracked down our guide and loaded our things into a pecky pecky and set out in search of the boiling river. We spent about 40 minutes traveling on the main body of the Amazon River until we reached a small tributary. As we traveled up, it seemed we were greeted by Yakumama as the water began to heat up. After a while, the debris in the river made it impassable by boat and our journey would continue on foot. As we traversed the muddy trail, sweat drenched our clothes and we were introduced to the mosquitoes that reign here. The intense heat mixed with the humidity made the trail challenging and the continual elevation change made the journey more treacherous. We were skeptical of the legends. Perhaps the intense heat of the Amazon was mischaracterized by those as boiling. However, my skepticism began to fade as we came over a ridge of a hill and the horizon became a hazy blur of vapor from the water below. As steam began to fill our lungs, we knew there might be some truth to the folklore of the boiling river. We just got through that grueling, grueling three hour hike. It was really steep and muddy, and it was the worst mosquitoes I've ever seen in the jungle. I mean, one of the spots was kind of like this. So we checked into this place, 
it's pretty primitive, but it's pretty nice. We checked in, we cooled off. Now, here's the boiling river. I wish I had something to throw in to see how hot it is. I'm gonna stick my finger in there. Uh, so this is the river that fed the hot river that we, that we drove up that quarter mile. Let's uh, stick my hand in the water. What do you think? I'm not, just for a second. If I fall in, I'm in big trouble. Okay, so right here, I'm on the rock. It's pretty hot, but not so bad. Oh yeah, it's, it's not boiling, but I can put my finger in there just for a minute. If you fell in, it would be horrible, horrible, horrible thing to happen to you. The next morning, the orchestra of the jungle served as our alarm clock. The crescendo of the birds mixed with the harmony of the bugs and was a beautiful set for the sunrise that greeted us, kissing the tops of the trees. Soon after the sunrise, we began our venture up the river to find where it actually starts to boil to verify the legend ourselves. Science tells us a slightly different story than our tale of the Yakumama. While hot springs are common throughout the world, reaching temperatures of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, they are almost exclusively heated by a volcanic activity and exist in small pools. What's unique about the Boiling River is the closest volcanic system is over 400 miles away. And in that the river is 80 feet wide and 20 feet deep and runs burning hot for almost four miles, it makes this the only river in the world of this kind. The theory is that the rainwater falls onto the surface of the Amazon rainforest and it finds deep-rooted faults where it travels down into the crust. The water is thus heated in accordance with geothermal gradient. It is then likely fed to the surface of the earth through fault-fed hot springs that act to heat up the river along this stretch. I checked the internet. There's no Starbucks for a long, long ways from here. So I did, uh, I did bring some coffee with me. This is gonna be awesome. So if you're ever next to a boiling stream, I highly suggest you bring some instant coffee with you. A Swiss Miss cocoa is always delicious in your coffee hot as a Starbucks that you can't drink. Mm. And Starbucks doesn't give me natural wood sticks to stir my coffee with. Except for it's really hot here. And if I fall in, I'll die. Today, two Chaman families still live along the Boiling River. Heavily versed in holistic medicine, these chamans explain the healing properties of the local vegetation as well as the river. A common medicine that is brewed here by the chamans is ayahuasca, a powerful psychedelic brew. While this may scare some away, the Peruvian government recently honored ayahuasca as a national treasure for its extraordinary therapeutic value and the importance to the Peruvian cultural history. It's made up of two plants, the bark from the vine of the Banisteriopsis genus and the leaves of the Psychotria tree. They are mixed together in cauldrons where they are boiled and reduced several times for 24 hours until it is a potent thick mixture that is consumed during these ceremonies. Y ya entonces por eso de, eh, nosotros decimos, eh, decimos que la ayahuasca es medicinal, ¿no? Es una planta muy medicinal y para nosotros es eh, curar a las personas antiguamente y actualmente también. Entonces yo que, que trabajo con 55 años con pura ayahuasca, toda una vida, entonces yo, yo digo que la ayahuasca es eh, medicinal. No es eh, alucinógeno, voy a tomar para mirar, alucinarme, no, sino para hacer un trabajo bien hecho. 
y curar las, estudiar las enfermedades, cómo puedo sacar más rápido del cuerpo de la persona. With ayahuasca and the ceremony surrounding it being set in this beautiful place in the Amazon, it was clear why so many viewed this as an extremely spiritual place. We asked the chaman about the old tale that had led us to this point. He confirmed what we had heard and proceeded to draw the serpent-like Yakumama. We asked of the location where the Yakamama was believed to live and he pointed us in the right direction. So we set out to see the dwelling of the Yakumama, the spot on the river where cold and boiling waters collide. The shaman had explained to us the spiritual significance of this place. And as we arrived, there was a pool, and sure enough, water on one side was cold and quickly mixed with hot water. When looking straight onto the rock formation where these waters collide, it is clear where the tales of the Yakumama legend begins as you are greeted by a rock formation resembling the head of a serpent. It is said that the Yakumama is the mother of twin spirits, one spirit manifests as the hot water, the other as the cold water. The interaction between these spirits, where the hot and cold waters collide, is known as the place where the boys come to meet their mother, and is described as the clash between the siblings. The cold water spirit crashes rain and cold water into the boiling river in an attempt to dominate his brother. The hot water spirit retaliates by boiling the water hotter. This is the area where the legendary figure Chuyachaki lives. He is a shapeshifter. This shapeshifter is spiteful towards humans and will appear to them when they are alone in the jungle. This spirit manifests as a person or animal luring their prey into the depths of the forest and corrupt their minds. When we returned to the home of the Chaman, we got to experience a ceremony surrounding ayahuasca. Its effects are so strong that the name ayahuasca directly translates into vine of the soul or Liana del Alma. The experiences with ayahuasca gives individual profound insight into their own psyche and some say you can look inside your soul. Once the individuals have taken the ayahuasca, the flames are dimmed and the chaman will help shepherd their experience through a low rhythmic chant. The legendary river represents the interconnectedness of all life forms and the vital role of nature in human existence. From the stories of the Yakumama to the cultural significance of ayahuasca, the boiling river with its seemingly impossible existence is a testament to the wonders and mysteries of nature that humans are yet to fully comprehend. We are leaving this place with a newfound respect for nature, a deep understanding of our own spiritual self, and a drive to protect these vital ecosystems.
These people are cannibals. Did you bring your clown outfit? You have to have your clown outfit. Cannibals don't eat clowns. Do you know why they don't eat clowns? Because we taste funny.